TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Designate Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu officially secures mandatory support to form Israel's next government coalition. Unidentified unmanned aerial vehicles reportedly strike a convoy of vehicles suspected of smuggling Iranian weapons after crossing the border from Iraq into Syria. French President Emmanuel Macron acknowledges the need to find an alternative solution to the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran. Israeli opposition leader and Likud party chairman Benjamin Netanyahu has officially secured enough support to engage in negotiations for a viable coalition, paving his way to a sixth term in office. Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog, who received the final tally from last week's parliamentary elections yesterday, announced his intention to conclude consultations with delegations of political factions, which managed to cross the electoral threshold of 3.25%. A marathon of consultations subsequently commenced yesterday afternoon, as part of which each political faction, in effect, recommends one single candidate for the task of forming a coalition, which requires a majority of 61 mandates out of the Israeli parliament's 120 seats. The first delegation to meet the president included members of the Likud party, which secured the largest number of mandates. אני חושב שלחבריי ולי יש באמת זכות גדולה לבוא לכאן בשמה של סיעת הליכוד, הסיעה הגדולה בכנסת, בת 32 חברי כנסת, ובשמם של מיליון מאה חמישה עשר אלף שלוש מאות שלושים ושישה אזרחים ואזרחיות יקרים שהצביעו עבורנו בבחירות, ולהמליץ בפני אדוני על בנימין נתניהו. Levin, who is a senior member of Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud, further highlighted his party's ambition to erect a right-wing government in accordance with the public's mandate. מדינת ישראל עברה באמת תקופה ארוכה מאוד של חוסר ודאות וסבבי בחירות חוזרים ונשנים. אני חושב שיש ציפייה ציבורית וכניעה ציבורית אפילו לכך שנצליח להקים ממשלה בהקדם. ותוצאות הבחירות הן, הן ברורות. יש מנדט ברור מרוב הציבור להקמת ממשלת ימין. While two more factions are scheduled to meet with President Herzog tomorrow, including the Labour Party and the Arab Communist Alliance of Hadash Tal respectively, Earlier today, at 4.30 p.m., the Jewish power faction of Itamar ben Gvir recommended Benjamin Netanyahu for the task of forming a government, effectively granting the latter the accumulated majority of 64 mandates. Nevertheless, in accordance with legal formalities, President Herzog is expected to grant Netanyahu the mandate to form a government this coming Sunday, granting him up to 42 days to fulfill the task. Meanwhile, it is worth noting that the head of Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party delegation, Yariv Levin, said following his meeting with the president that asserting Israel's sovereignty over the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley was high on the next Israeli government's agenda. Consequently, in response to Levin's remarks, U.S. Ambassador to Israel Tom Nides warned Israel that the Biden administration would fight any Israeli attempt to annex territory with all of its might. The American ambassador added that while Israel is a democracy and elected its own officials, the United States also must worry about things that it cares about and believes in. Turning to eastern Syria, where unidentified unmanned aerial vehicles reportedly struck a convoy of vehicles, suspected of smuggling Iranian weapons after crossing the border from Iraq into Syria late last night. The aerial strike reportedly targeted the convoy of vehicles near the Syrian border town of Al-Bukamal, a known hub of Iranian proxy militias. Moreover, it has been reported that several of the convoy's vehicles were destroyed and at least 10 people, including an unknown number of Iranians, were killed. 
Meanwhile, Iranian state television reported this morning that two fuel tankers had been destroyed after crossing into Syria, attributing blame to a U.S. drone strike. Nevertheless, a spokesman for the U.S. military stressed that the United States was not involved. It is important noting that initial reports of this attack were picked up by the Wall Street Journal, which attributed responsibility to the Israeli Air Force, citing people familiar with the attack. Nonetheless, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged involvement in a response to TV7's request for comment. Turning to Vienna, where Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Mariano Grossi, met with an Iranian delegation in an attempt to re-engage vis-à-vis the Islamic Republic's nuclear program. We, uh, we had a meeting um, at working level, I would say. It was not a high-level meeting, it was a working-level meeting uh, between our teams. And uh, this uh, meeting was aimed at looking at, uh, at a re-engagement. Uh, with with them, uh, because, um, uh, like you said, uh, the conversations had have been, uh, you know, moving at a very slow pace, without us being able to get any any concrete results so far. So um, we hope that this time would be uh, would be the good, the, the good uh, one. The chief priority of the IAEA at this stage is to make some tangible progress related to open investigations in relation to nuclear particles that were uncovered from undeclared sites in Iran. Uh, what people might be expecting is news on whether we have been making progress on our open investigations and it is no secret that we haven't been able to, to register some tangible um, elements. Uh, we have an opportunity to re-engage or to continue our work, but this is going to be happening after my reports are out. The referred to reports are due to be published ahead of the IAEA Board of Governors meeting, scheduled for later this month. Consequently, as has been the case prior to every consecutive Board of Governors meeting over the past two years, the Islamic Republic has made half-measured overtures to the agency as part of evident efforts to evade condemning resolutions. <laughs> با تمرکز بر نگاه فنی بر اساس آنچه که با هم در روزهای گذشته توافق کرده ایم نسبت به حل و فصل برخی از اتهامات مورد نظر آژانس و مطرح شده توسط آژانس علیه جمهوری اسلامی ایران بتوانیم از این مرحله از مسیر well, the so-called JCPOA, which is the acronym for the technical term of the 2015 nuclear agreement, has already lost any tangible substance during a G7 foreign ministerial that was held in the German city of Münster last week. Berlin's top diplomat asserted the necessity to salvage the agreement. Und de facto ähm, ist das JCPOA äh, damit äh, derzeit äh, auf Eis äh, gelegt. Nichtsdestotrotz, es gibt ja auch einige, die sagen, dann soll man sagen, das Ganze ist gescheitert. Aber wenn man in der internationalen Außenpolitik, in der Diplomatie sagt, äh, es ist gescheitert, dann bedeutet das ja, man nimmt es jetzt hin, dass es eine weitere Anreicherung geben wird. Und ich bin zutiefst davon überzeugt, äh, der Iran, das Regime wird nicht besser dadurch, wenn sie eine Atomwaffe haben, sondern es wird wird nur noch schlimmer werden für die regionale Sicherheit und auch für die Menschen im Iran. Und deswegen machen wir deutlich, das, was wir als E3 im Rahmen des JCPOA in dem letzten Dreivierteljahr gesagt haben, es darf keine weitere Anreicherung geben. Es muss einen Zugang für die IAEO zu den Atomkraftwerken geben. Das ist weiterhin das, was wir vom Iran einfordern und wozu sich der Iran in internationalen Verträgen auch verpflichtet hat. While aspiring to reinvigorate an agreement with Iran which would curb its nuclear program in exchange for much-wanted sanctions relief, French President Emmanuel Macron during a press conference at Egypt's COP27 earlier this week 
has become the first Western leader since the Biden administration assumed office to acknowledge the JCPOA as obsolete, stressing the necessity for a new approach. We need a strong regional and collective approach. This is why, first, we do believe that we, have, we need a collective framework for nuclear activity. JCPOA was an approach probably not sufficient. We thought it was a mistake to break JCPOA without replacing it by something better. The coming weeks will tell us if we can resume something more ambitious. So my conviction is the following. We have to build a new setup and a new framework now to put more pressure on them. The problem is that after decades of sanctions, we have to change the method as well. And on this topic as well, we have to be a little bit innovative and more inclusive with the, the region and the neighboring countries. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to stress once again our deep appreciation for TV7 Israel's family of supporters. TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry and therefore your financial contributions essentially enable us to sustain our ongoing operations here in Jerusalem. Additionally, I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen wishing you an Erev Mevorach and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.